And I think a lot of us women have gone through a lot of emotional turmoil as a result of rushing into things because we don't take, we don't, at that stage, we don't take our time to um, learn about the partner that we are with because the father of Inga Niyako is a very, that person is going to be there forever. Yeah. They're going to be there forever. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. Sure. Yeah, I'll give you time. Are okay. you done? Are you yeah, okay. feeling good about yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. Same here. Welcome back to Engineer Your Life. Thank you. Have you started? Yeah, of course. Nobody said action. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll here. As organic as possible. Nobody said action, child. <laughs> I come back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invite once again. Um, no. The last time we had you, you seemed to have caused a stir. Sana. <laughs> Sana. Yo. In a good and a bad way. Sure. Um, what's the good? What's the bad out of it? I think, I think the bad. So, um, before the interview got released, I think I was in a very good space with the father of my child. So I explained to him, "Mugutsi, you know what? This is what I said, and this is what, um, what's gonna come out and stuff." And he was very understanding. So I think once I had confirmation from the family that they were okay with sure. what I said, then I was comfortable with whatever. Um, Slack or whatever negative comments was going to come my way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because no one said, what are you compromising the child? Mm -hmm. You are compromising us as a family. So it was literally my truth. And um, if the people that were close to me were fine with it, then I was also good. So I think also the good that came out of it was um, a lot of mothers reached out to me. I think yeah. I, I made a lot of new friends. Really? I, yeah, I made a lot of new friends. I did not realize how many women went through what I went through. Sure. You know, when I was talking, I was talking about my truth. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it had nothing to it do... It was just your reality. It was just my reality. It had nothing to do with encouraging anyone. It was literally, oh, what's he mean? Uh, this is what has happened. And to get an influx of women who have been through the same thing was just very overwhelming for me. Um, Yo, know, I got a lot of new friends, new clients who are, who are my friends now. So I, overall, I have no regrets. Yeah. I, I'm glad I did it. Um, it was an eye-opener op, eye and a platform for me to grow as an individual. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. It's, it's interesting, just as, as a backstory for somebody who, who's either a new viewer or yeah. didn't watch that episode. So we had Uzima about a year ago. Yeah. Um, on the show when we were still recording in Durban. Mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting in the garden and she spoke in depth about the hurt that she went through with yeah. the father of your daughter. Yeah. Um, and part of that hurt was how he was absent almost immediately yeah. when you gave birth. Um, how even you fell pregnant like a month into the relationship. Four yeah. weeks. I remember four weeks was trending. Yeah. Um, and how all of that as a woman was your lived reality that sometimes we f we try to have children to fill a void that we have in our hearts. Yeah. And you got a lot of flack for that. But as you're saying, a lot of women said, actually, a lot of us want to have children because there's a void that we're filling. There is mm -hmm. a, a sense of non-belonging that yeah. we have because maybe we don't have a romantic partner. We don't have a husband. Yeah. We don't have a committed relationship. And here you saying to me, um, so many people related. Mm. So many people related. I had no idea. I thought going through this experience that I went through I would say, no, it's just, it was a me thing. It was a hormonal thing. It was coming into the age of 30, mm -hmm. um, unmarried. Um, cause when you grow up, you have an idea of how things are supposed to go. So it's cuts us ham, but I was unmarried. I wasn't in a relationship. I felt like the time was now for me to have a child. And I did it with the first person that. <laughs> <laughs> was available. <laughs> yeah. That was available. I did not care who he was. I just wanted what I wanted. And it being a me thing, uh, 
speaking about it, you know, thinking it was just a me thing, not realizing that a lot of us go through this. Yeah. We, we we hit the age, I think 29, like 29 is like the age where you just start to panic as a woman. We'll say, well, now so I don't have a child. I don't have, uh, I don't have anything to refer to as, I, I, you know, the structure that you had in your head since you were a child, so we just mm-hmm. rush into it. And I think a lot of us, women have gone through a lot of emotional turmoil as a result of rushing into things because we don't take we don't at that stage we don't take our time to um learn about the partner that we are with because the father of inga Niyako is a very that person is going to be there forever yeah they're going to be there forever yeah. they're not going anywhere sure. you know so i think also um coming back to the father of my child and where we are right now i think he also had to maneuver around his childhood traumas and how and what fatherhood was to him, you know. Now he has, Nala just is old enough now, like she she knows how to dial the phone and, and say, hi, Dada. So I think I've become, I'm becoming more and more like proud of the father he's becoming because now he's not doing it because I said he should. He's doing it because he wants to. Yeah. And he wants to have a relationship with his child. So I see that and I look at that and I'm like, okay, who is that? And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what he went through and what his perspective was um, and what fatherhood meant to him, Mm -hmm. you know. So I had to, as hard as it was, as hard as I drilled it in him, um, that made us fight and go our separate ways. I think I also had to give him space to just figure it out. And he's figuring it out. I love love that. Yeah. Because you're saying, I'm acknowledging that even I rushed for my own selfish reasons yeah. to have a child with him mm-hmm. without consulting if he's ready to, because mm. it takes two people to have a child. It really does. And those two people must be consensually ready to yes. have the child, to right? The child. So one of the repercussions of another party not being ready is that they might rebel yes. in this whole process. Mm. And there's a famous word where men are called deadbeats, but looking back in your situation, Perhaps we should give grace to people who were shoved into fatherhood. Okay, he wasn't shoved into, sho- into fatherhood, by the way, FYI. Yeah. Um, but you know what, Lungelo, going back to uh, fatherhood and the essence of fatherhood, mm-hmm. um, I think in, in my growth process and learning how to uh, maneuver around parenthood mm-hmm. uh, with him is that we have... I, I grew up a certain way and yeah. he grew up a certain I way. I hear you. I hear you. And it's nuanced. It's yeah. 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 So we have our own childhood traumas. Sure. We have our own um ways of life and in which we were raised. And we've come together to raise this little child uh, in a way that we know best. And his best might might not be my best. Mm-hmm. So um because I think for him, like the, the the home that he grew up in is not was not the same as the home that I grew up in. Sure. So, in forgiving him, I had to acknowledge Oguti, Yazi. I, I was at an advantage growing up, having both parents in one house, having them married, and having to learn what family is built on and what foundation it's built on. Some people don't, unfortunately, and this is not making excuses for him. But um, as I said, um, I'm just giving him the time and the space to to rediscover what fatherhood is. I hear you. And where we are at right now, I think I think he is he is he's getting there. Like he's he's trying. He's uh, uh, the, trying to get there. Thank you for correcting me. Perhaps yeah. he wasn't shoved, but he was not ready. He just didn't realize that. Th- this is what I, I think. Yeah. He, I think he wasn't ready for the type of um, parenting that I wanted from him. I hear you. He wasn't ready for that. You got that. Yeah. Because he was a parent regardless. In his mind, he was doing it. Okay, this this is what I think should be done. This is what I think should be done. Yeah. When you you grow up in a situation where um, things are not necessarily the way that uh, the normal household is run, you get confused. But... And then he's gonna be like, but me oh, I'm a But he still loved me, yeah, type yeah, of thing, yeah. you know. I also had to be like, okay, maybe his actions uh, uh, 
of not being quite there, but being there in other areas does not necessarily make him an absent father. I hear you. I hear you. But he has to be told, or would he, these kind of actions are you being absent. Okay. And just because you don't see it in, in this light, it doesn't mean you are not doing it. So see it. See it. I hear you. And my, I think for me, for the longest time, my delivery to him, and that's what I think made us like, and Clash. made him just like, be like, I, I don't want to talk to this girl. Yeah. Because my delivery was very harsh. Because I'm dealing with a child here. Yeah. And yeah. if you can't step up, then, yeah. Yeah. you know, one of us has to go. You have to go. You know? What I'm definitely recognizing, though, is that you've healed from that whole era. I'm healing. <laughs> He's accept that you've healed. I'm healing. Okay. I, 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 you know, look, look, it will always be a journey. I'll, I, I'll always look back into um, what transpired between him and I and, and feel hurt. So for me, healing is like putting a bandage um, and letting the sore heal. It's still healing. The sore is still there. And even when you rip the bandage off, the scar is still going to be there. Sure. To remind you that this yeah. is what you went through. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a journey because there are days where I look back and I say, yo, I, I wish he could have done things differently. I wish I could have done things differently. And it still hurts. Uh, I cry about it sometimes that, you know, the weight of parenthood like lies in my hands mostly. I have to be the present parent. Primary parent. Primary yeah. parents. You know, there are days where... I, I, I can't call him and say, and, and have to put that upon my parents or myself, you know. I've had to accept that responsibility and accept who he is as a father and who he wants to be as a father and just give him space to grow and be okay with him growing. Yeah. And that process hasn't been easy, Lungelo. It hasn't been easy because I have my own thoughts and ideas mm -hmm. of what I want things to be. And healing also... Is, is also accepting sure. that this is how things are and what am I going to do to... How do I navigate how things How do I navigate and how... Because I can't change them. I can't change them. How yeah. can I counteract certain uh, behaviors and mm. things so that my child is not affected in mm. the long run? She will be affected yeah. somehow, but I, I need to form a better cushion for her to land on yeah. uh, while all of this is happening. How's motherhood in the last year for you? Motherhood. I, I, you know. Definitely coming from a place of forgiving and healing. And he Surely it's a better experience. I love, Lungela, I love motherhood. Um, the child has given me so much. I, I, I cherish motherhood with everything in me. Hmm. And I say this, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart. I, I love that girl. Um, I think bringing her into the world uh, was for my own selfish reasons, but um, motherhood broke me and molded me back again into this person that I never, ever thought I'd be. I'm taking risks now. Like, I would never have ever taken a risk to just pack my bags and leave and come to Johannesburg. I think about it, but, you know, I'm taking risks now that I wouldn't take had she not been there. Like, sure. she literally, as little as she is, encourages me I can't even say to be the best version of myself but she encourages me to be the best mother I can be would you her. say she's moving you towards your purpose she really is yeah oh my goodness like she she really is I I, I was I was saying this one day we'll see about one day when Naledi turns 21 I'm gonna get her something so massive because she really she I, I owe her so much yeah. I owe that girl so much because before her life was life was going down man like life was up and down i was going <laughs> down there was no purpose there was no thought of the future and um now it's like yo what can i do to make her life better what can i do to just like make things better for her and i get excited about that prospects um like my my purpose is solely around motherhood to the point where you know, I get, I, I now understand mothers who, who fall out of relationships with the father of their children and their sole purpose is to not date, but to concentrate mm. on this thing. Until because, they're like 21. Until they're like they're 21. Like, I'm going to for 21 yeah, years. Because, <laughs> no, because your, your focus shifts. So it shifts this, the love that you have for this child and the purpose that they've given you drives you to just want to focus all your energy on it and how you can make their life better and your life better. So, man, like, yo. 
Is it a purpose that people without children will never understand or is just different? Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Um, somebody without a child may achieve more than what I, you know, what I could achieve. You know, um, I just think that for me personally, um, it, it brought about a new focus for me. Okay. It, it brought about a higher purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I did not realize how purposeless my life was sure. for her. Yeah. You know, how how I was also lacking in um in my relationship with God and who I was, um, um like all of those things didn't exist. Like it was just like I was just living, man, like living, like doing whatever. So it re it, it it shifted my focus. And for some people it doesn't happen like that. You know, some people have issues with having children and when they have kids, it's like, yo, this is the, I didn't sign up for this, you know? Uh, so it really is a different experience for each individual. I would think what children, what children do for you. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week, but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations, but you are not liking, you are not subscribing, and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth, and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. I, I I actually will concur because yeah. I, I I've got a friend whom we are close and he's married. Yeah. And he's confided with, with me a few times that he doesn't think his wife ever wanted kids. Mm. He's like the way she approaches motherhood. Yeah. You could see it's it's because she had to follow the script. Mm. Mm. You know? Lunge. He even feels like I love these kids more than she ever will. Yeah. You know? Oh, this following the script thing. Yo, yeah. because because <laughs> you, you taught at school. It's okay. At a certain point in life, this is how much you ha you must achieve. And we look at people and we think, this is how things should be. You know, I think even for me, and even in my studies, because I, I when I first came into university, I studied geology, but I hated it. Mm. I did it because I was following a script. Mm, yeah. Um. Later on in my life, did I understand that I'm actually a creative and not a scientist? Yeah, yeah. So even in motherhood, some people actually, you have this thought in your head, Uwuti, when I get married, I need to have children. And you think, Uwuti, these kids are going to uh, supply a certain purpose or give you a certain purpose. And you're like, actually, I did not need this. Mm, like, mm, mm. I did not need this. Um, because also, also, um, you rediscover personalities and character traits about you that you never thought okay. were there. Okay. So certain things start to come up. And yeah. if we know about Nugoti, yo, these kids are bringing up Nugoti. I never, I never ever intended on having this, um, uh, on having this type of setup. Then you will struggle. You will definitely struggle. I know a couple of women who have gone through a shame, and it's it's actually very hard to watch because the people that suffer sure. are the kids. Sure, are the kids. Yeah, I have an I have um an aunt, and her kids are just they gravitate towards my mom more because mm -hmm. my mom is like very motherly, and you watch that dynamic. What's Lomundi was just following a script shame. She never wanted to be this person. None of this. <laughs> None of this. So. Take your time. Well, when it comes to motherhood, take your time. Take your time. Do you believe you're operating in your purpose right now? Um, I'm operating. I'm operating towards my purpose. I guess that. Towards my purpose. Um, I get. I get times. I mean, moving to Jobik wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Um, when I moved into uh this place, I I was sharing with somebody, and it she turned out to be the worst roommate. <laughs> of my life the worst roommate of my life and for me the plan was to do a year sharing so that i save up for an apartment sure. um next year and god was like uh no let's change your plan maybe you need to live alone i've never lived alone Nungel. so this was my first experience of living alone uh, ever in my life um and it was hard. Yeah. I won't lie. Being alone uh, was hard. I'm being challenged. There were moments where I was like, hey, maybe I need to go back to Durban <laughs> and just give this up. 
So um, in that process as well, I'm rediscovering who I am okay. again, okay. again, and what I want to be and what I want to do. And it's a constant it's discovery. A con- it's a constant. Th- there's no end to it. There yeah. isn't. Yeah. And I think I have to thank um, God for putting me in isolation, huh. for putting me, uh, you know, in a place where I can actually think deeply um, and pray deeply and not be influenced by voices or would say, this is who you are. And this is, and just listen to the voice of God and, and, and hear him say, would say, this is what I, this is what I want from you. And sometimes it's bigger than me. Sometimes I feel like it's bigger than me. And those are the challenges that I'm maneuvering. Um, yo, Lungel, Igoli is, is teaching me not to be coy. Correct. And not to, and not to wait around for opportunities. Sure. I need to, yeah. You know, I need to reach out, and I, I think also that is what God has been teaching me as well. Because I mean, I'm, I'm a person that doesn't like to ask for help. Sure, I hate asking for help. Yeah, I'm here. I'm in the city. I'm alone. I. You need to have a community. I need to have a community. No matter so, how small it is. No matter how fact, small. The smaller the better in your work. The smaller the better. <laughs> yeah. And God is teaching me how to ask for help. Sure. I'm asking for help. I'm like, Lord, I've never been in a position where I need to ask for help. I don't like being this. I don't like asking for help. And I just heard him say, you are going to be in positions one day where you are going to be leading organizations. And if you can't ask for help now at this stage, you can't give, how help. Are, you can't give help. And yeah. how are you going to ask for help for these organizations to sure. grow? Sure. So I was like, yo. This is this is crazy. This is this is madness. But going on to the purpose um, question, I, it, what I, what I'm saying, it's it's leading me towards purpose because I might have my own analogy of what life should be, but God sure. is saying keeps redirecting here and here. Do this, do that. You, you know, you speak of isolation, and um, it, it's such an important thing that has been in my heart for the, for the past few weeks, few months, actually. Yeah. Where I've lived alone since I was eighteen. So eighteen, don't get lost. Since I was eighteen, Boys I school. left. I, no, no, since, varsity. I mean, since varsity, I never turned back. Lived really? alone, graduated, rented for a few months, bought my first house, Graduate, never turned gra- back. Graduated, graduated, graduated. Yeah, graduated. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm a> graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, I and when and when you live alone, you get a lot of time to think mm. and reflect and mm. think again and reflect, and then have to develop healthy mechanisms of coping with what you're thinking with, right? So there's a lot of that that happens in isolation. Yeah. And what I love though about isolation and how I've pursued my own visions and yeah. my own purpose is that in isolation is when God talks to you, right? There is God doesn't. We talk to you at F and B Stadium when ninety thousand people are right. around. No, God talks to you when you're alone, when there One. is stillness, mm. when there is time to connect with Him. One hundred percent. And in that isolation, God speaks vision to you. And vision, remember, is an individual thing. Mm. So if God speaks to you alone, you have to be alone to hear it. Exactly. Um, not necessarily hear it in, in a loud voice. I'm, yeah. No, to understand spiritually, feel it, and be connected yeah. to it. So. I, 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 I believe that this isolation season is important for you. Mm. And I hope you are you are enjoying it more than feeling the pain of it because there's a lot of pain in being alone. There's a lot of pain. Right? <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> there's a lot of pain. Yeah. I miss my child. I miss yeah. home. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I miss everything about being in a family set up, having your meals cooked. <laughs> now I have to think about, I, I need Break to get up. And I need to serve myself. <laughs> But I, I needed it. Yeah, Lungelo. Yeah, you speak. Yeah. You're making me think now. Um, yeah. I, I needed it because I think for the longest time I've been surrounded by people. I've been mm. surrounded by different voices. I've been surrounded by my parents. My parents are very my parents are very vocal in my life. Yeah. Um although they are they are very supportive, but they're very vocal in my life. Um the presence of my child and, and motherhood. I think I also had to remove myself a bit from motherhood as well to just rediscover uh, what purpose is, what my purpose is beyond this life that I'm living. Mm. And when I came to Joburg, some guy that I went on a date, he was just like, so um, what what other hobbies do you have? I'm just like, and nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. My life was centered around work and my child. Yeah. 
So now it's like, okay, I'm becoming Uzama now with the mm. hobbies. I'm becoming Uzama that can take a book and read. I never had time to read. Mm. Now I read. Um, I'm becoming Uzama that can pray three times a day. I'm becoming Uzama that can self-introspect now on a deeper level because I've trained myself to listen to God's voice. I- I've trained myself to... Because that's that's also a very hard thing to do, to Absolutely. be able to separate your thoughts mm-hmm. and what God's thoughts mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. Um, and what he's saying to you. Um, I've learned how to do that. I've learned that, that switch. Um, I've learned how to be more bold in my approach in life and to be more decisive. Because um, I was a very indecisive human being. Um, it would take me ages to make a decision. Nang Fonela... 10 people yeah, for yeah, one decision. Yeah, yeah. Now all I need to do is to trust the voice that is inside of me. And this is happening in my 30s, you know, um, which is something very, it's something very, very new for me. Um, and so all of this is happening and it's happening while I'm alone. It's happening away from friends. It's happening away from family. So, yeah. Do you sometimes feel like you are delayed? There's a lot of people, someone out there um, has been working maybe a job that doesn't fulfill them. Yeah. um, Because perhaps they only did, they didn't go to varsity, didn't have the money or, and then they immediately had to work to feed the family and they're 31 Mm -hmm. and they're like, yo, but three years studying this degree or four years studying this degree, I'll be 34 when I finish. Yeah. That's so far. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, As a person who feels like they are restarting. Yeah. Um. Is the process of restarting worth it? So look, look, I'm I'm the poster child of delays. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I I I went to UKZN. I I studied geology, um, and then in my third year, I was like, nope, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. And mind you, in 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 geology, um, so there's like 200 of us in our first year, and then they they pick the top 60 to go into the second year. So I mean, in 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 that year, I think there was about forty of us, forty three of us that made it into second year, and I was part of that. So I was, I thought, okay, maybe this was my purpose. And in third year, when I did my practicals, I was like, uh, no, no, thank you. And I I maneuvered life, trying to figure out. I maneuvered my twenties, trying to figure out where I actually fit in, um, where I belong, where I belong. I had no idea what it is I wanted to do. I'd move on from job to job. I did retail. Um, I was in the digital marketing space before influencers were even like a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a bit of modeling still, but I worked. I made sure that I worked. Um, I worked. Uh, I also try to figure myself out in relationships, uh, also rediscovering relationships, because in your 20s, you, you're figuring it out. You're thinking, well, hey, as in, maybe let me just date people that are financially stable mm, mm, as, mm, opposed mm. To, as opposed to people who have great personalities. Sure. I overlooked those things. Sure. Trying to rediscover that. Also, I feel like also relationships kind of set me back as well sure. in life. Um, so rediscovering myself, rediscovering who I was, I came into, I think in my late twenties with the influencing thing and I did very well in it. And then a lady came and mind you, I'm in my thirties. I don't have a nine to five. I don't have a business. I don't have anything that I can say was okay. Inje, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Built. Yeah. Yeah. I'm freelancing and I'm not freelancing, freelancing because I want to freelancing because I feel like there's something that I need to do or work towards, but I do not know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that lady was born. Um, and then I was just like, I can't carry on like this. I have to I have to do something. And then I started the makeup business. Um, and then the makeup business just like it blew. Like it blew. Like it, 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 it became something that I never thought it would sure. be. And the purpose wasn't to... It was something to to keep me occupied or one man or like mm-hmm. rediscover what I wanted to do. Um, and then the makeup thing just took off. It just took off. And I just remember 
feeling like, okay, just be consistent and just see where this will take you. Where consistency will take you. Where consistency will take you. Just be consistent in one thing and then maybe everything else will fall into place, you know. Just be consistent in this. And then I told myself, okay, let me just do this. Um, But at the back of my mind, you're seeing Abantu Owafundanabo driving cars. They own cars. Mm. They they own homes. They are are married. Mm -hmm. Um, Dating becomes more difficult because it feels like, what am I going to... Well, what am I going to bring to the table financially? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have money to take you out on dates every other week, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I don't have money to contribute to towards rent mm-hmm. uh, that, you know. So it's it, it sets you back also in terms of your caliber of men sure. uh, that you want to date. You're limited in the caliber of men that you want to date. Um, so there's just been a lot of setbacks because I am trying to figure out what it is but you know Lungela, i i i cannot you know the uh, uh, I, I i won't take anything back through the experience i cannot take anything back in my journey because mm-hmm. it has really really taught me so much about myself it taught me so much about the reasons for my delays the reasons for sure. for me going through certain things um why certain things broke me and how they have rebuilt me into who I am. Because had I not gone through that, had I, had I studied and, and finished my geology course, maybe I would have been in a p- better position in life, but I don't think I would have been fulfilled. Uh, the fulfillment that I would have mm. had. Mm. Better position, but not your position. Not my position. You'd be in a position, but it's someone yeah, else's you life. Know, feeling out of place yeah. is the worst thing that could ever happen to you no matter how successful you are because you find successful people who they kill themselves because they feel out of place they feel like something is missing and i never and that was always my 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 thing because i never want to feel like i'm in the wrong position in life and i'm not fulfilling the purpose that god wants for me Mm. and so however long it takes me i know it's going to get there because i feel like about in 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 the depths of our souls and in our hearts, we know we know that there's something bigger and greater that we are work, working towards. And mm-hmm. if when uh, you feel like you're not working towards that, then you are going to struggle. And even if it's hard at the moment, even if the journey is hard and you're feeling delayed, the fulfillment that you have, that you're working towards something bigger mm-hmm. through this, is way, is way better. That feeling is way better than accomplishing, you know, Accomplishing what what society deems as successful sure. for your age, accomplishing things that are not yours. Accomplishing the accomplishments are there, but they're not yours. They're not yours. They yeah. they they're not yours, and they won't fulfill you. Yeah, yeah they won't yeah. fulfill you the way that you think they'll fulfill you. That's why people who are heavily addicted to many things mm. exist, but they are deemed to be successful. They are deemed to be successful. Um, there are people whose careers have fallen in front of us who were super famous mm. because they are deemed to be successful. Mm. But because they weren't connected necessarily to who they are. And to their purpose. And to their purpose. They made all these bad yep. decisions because they're still searching even though everybody thinks they've arrived. 100%. You know? 100%. 100%. I've been around. Um, so in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. Not now. <laughs> I dated very powerful men. Yeah. Um, I think uh, in my 20, 20s, I was very attracted to that kind of... Uh, Stature in a man. Yeah, I, yeah. I love power. Mm-hmm. But you sit and you talk to these guys and you just realize, oh, t- yo, these people are missing a lot internally. Huh. These people are very childlike in, in their thinking. Not because, um, you know, not because life hasn't offered them the experiences to grow up, but because they, are, they have positioned themselves to think that money... Um, is 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 the be all? Mm. Money money gets money gets your opinion heard, even mm-hmm. if it's stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, um, money validates money your valid, it valid, makes it right. It makes it right. Yeah. It makes it right. So you sit and you, and you think, oh, say, yo, uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, money doesn't guarantee emotional intelligence because. Emotional intelligence also needs to go with experience. And some of these people have never gone through the experience of life. They'll probably never reach that experience because they're so unaware because they are in the situation where they are benefiting heavily, uh, that they don't feel the need to 
go through the processes of life. And most of them, 90% of them are either addicted to some kind of substance or a drug because... Or sex. Or sex. Womanizing. Womanizing. There's yeah. some kind of addiction mm-hmm. to fill that void because that void is what they don't understand. Mm-hmm. And most people won't get there, but like when you do get there, you understand that this void is because there's something that you need to be working towards, but you'll mm-hmm. never work to it. it. It won't click to you because you think you've arrived. I feel like the biggest <laughs> display of that void... Um, uh, Please forgive me if you take offense. Club yeah. culture. That is like... No void, offense. Boys getting screamed like this. It's like, hi, we all here because ma- the majority of us have a void. Void, void, it's void. void. It's void. And we need to show off this void. It is Let me void. buy the most expensive thing. Let me have my name put on a board when the alcohol arrives. Man. Club culture. Right? A void galore. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of people with voids coming together to yeah. just like... Try and yeah. try and fill this thing with yeah. good music. I'm also some daily book I imagine. You could say, I in a dark room <laughs> with loud <land> music, <laughs> and you're getting drunk yeah. for once for, for you to feel miserable the next day. And there's so many energies in a club, yeah, yeah. You just and it's crazy, it's crazy business. <laughs> uh, since we're on the topic of relationships, I just yeah. want to speak on you mentioned something, obviously. Uh, this example you just made probably um, 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 will answer this as well. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that a lot of the relationships that you 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 made yeah. were the reasons for your delays. How can a relationship cause you to delay in life? Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yes, I I I want to even like tell my daughter what's it and then I mean please date when you're like twenty five <laughs> when you've established yourself right. and who you are. Right. Because I I think I started dating like straight after high school. I started dating. Um, in the early years of my life. And the first serious relationship I got into, I was about 18, 19. Um, and this boy came from a very powerful family, had a lot of influence. Um, but he was, later on in our relationship, was very abusive. Um, so you can imagine I'm 19 years old, I'm 18 years old, um, delaying in, in, in school. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to write on my test because why am I? Mm. Um, so mentally, I'm not okay. I'm not okay to study because I'm in this relationship. You're being physically abused. I'm being yeah. physically abused. And there was even a year where I stopped school because <clears throat> I had to take a break mentally. So that's another delay. Um, then I went back to school later on in my life. Uh, but school was very difficult for me. School was very, very difficult to, to get into because... I, I couldn't I couldn't split myself emotionally mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. be present uh, in my studies while you're being abused while I'm being abused yeah you know because abuse makes you identify with being abused yes yeah yeah one hundred percent you identify with that that particular um, individual you 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 become weak mm-hmm. um, you become weak you become emotionally weak you become lazy you become dependent on your your abuser. I mean, I get a lot of it because this, this guy had money. So um, my mind as 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 a young girl kind of shifted towards dependency, mm. um, towards him. And it made me very um, complacent with my work. It made me very unambitious. Um, so that relationship really delayed me. Um, it really delayed me, but also in... In, in the delay, I kind of rediscovered myself as well. Then I went into another relationship. Um, yeah, I went into yeah, I went into another a very serious relationship with this guy. Um, and in the relationship, he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't abusive, but um, also another form of narcissism. No, he wasn't. He he is a narcissistic shame. I just think that I went to my old ways of thinking okay. from from because I, I didn't have time to heal from my last relationship. Okay. So when I transitioned into this relationship, and instead of being an independent individual, I kind of like lagged on to to him, um, and not be an independent individual to be Uzama. Um, so that that type of thing kind of delayed me because I chopped and I changed things that I wanted to do. Um, I lacked focus, um, and he kind of let me do that. So, 
not to blame him, but like, had I just been alone, had I just been alone during that period of time, I would have had time to introspect and to rediscover who I was outside of a relationship and to yeah, heal from yeah, the relationship. Yeah. So again, that form of delay on my side, which was self-sabotage, um, getting into relationships as well where your emotional stability is also um, influenced but your emotional stability is influenced by who you're with. Mm -hmm. And you tend to circle your whole life and your whole thoughts and, and your whole being around um, this person. Um, that's, what I, that's what I did when I got into relationships. And I forgot about every other thing um, around me. And so coming back into my 30s now, um, first time in my life being single for this long, I, I kind of refocused and I, and I understood why um why God has put me in a situation where I'm single now because God understands or see when you are in a relationship as a band Fazan and that's why the church always wants us to get married quickly because mm -hmm. when you're in a relationship, um you as women we 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 put we um so it's wow uh, we it becomes our altar whether yeah. whether we like it or not yeah, it just yeah, happens yeah, yeah. and God tends to come to you submit them. completely you submit completely yeah. to this altar that yeah. is this man so, which is not God which is not God yeah you know you submit completely and you dedicate your life and your time into this because no matter what, like I even went back into the thoughts of okay fine get into a relationship while I am try I'm trying to get you to my side um. To, to get to know me as mm. God, get into a relationship. You're going to probably see this guy four times a week. Because four times a week, you guys are going to be intimate. Where is the prayer time in the four times a week? Mm. Sundays are probably for him. Mm. You're probably not going to go to church. For lovers. <laughs> probably not going go sure. to go to church. So this is a dedication we put into relationships and not to ourselves and to God. And so um, rediscovering who I was outside of a relationship was quite important because I, I, I look back now and I was just like, yeah, well, I was setting myself back a lot because of relationships and putting them at a pedestal, uh, putting them in an altar. Um, instead of putting God in an altar, putting, putting, putting work, putting myself first, I was putting this thing before anything else and it consumed me. It really it consumes you. It consumes who you are, because when you leave a relationship, you when you heal, you dis you rediscover who you are because of how you were, uh, and because of who you thought you were. Sure, sure, sure. In, in that situation, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think I said all I need to say. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Marco, uh, we, we we're nearing the end of our conversation. Yeah. Um. Firstly, thanks once again for availing yourself. Uh, for the second time. <laughs> for the second time. Uh, and, and really, um, this conversation was part of our Power Woman series. Mm -hmm. So happy Women's Month! Yeah, bon as a woman who has power in absolutely refining herself, mm -hmm. in reinventing herself, as you're saying, yeah. and going to this journey, accepting the journey, yeah. accepting the delays, and saying. I've forgiven one myself. I've forgiven the people who've hurt me. And I've acknowledged that all the delays, all the processes were important for me to discover who I am. 100. And I was very deliberate with the team in mm -hmm. wanting you to be part of this Women's Month series because the the Women's Month seminars and, and, and platforms seem to give people who are financially superior, CEOs of companies, um, I don't yeah. know, the minister of what, what, mm. and... The girl who has gone through real things, real life that things. real life people can relate to, doesn't ever seem to get a voice. So thank yeah. you for being that real girl who's relatable and being willing to share that platform with us yeah, well, and that opportunity okay. with us. Thank you, Lungelo. And thank you for this platform because I, yeah, it, it has really helped me to understand what my life purpose is for because you go through life and you think oh, see, why why me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I've I think after this uh, after speaking to you I've gotten to a point where it's like why not me mm. and even in my work even when I when I interact with clients I'm finding that I'm healing people through sure. my own experience. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not wise. I didn't wake up one day and become this wise, lazy, wise, wise lady. I had to go through certain life experiences to mold me. And now, 
being able to speak about it has made me not be ashamed of my life and the things that I've been through. So thank you for helping me open up to who I am yeah, and who yeah. I want to become and not being afraid to 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 talk man and not being afraid of uh, of 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 what I've been through. Um I think for the longest time there was a lot of not shame but like being embarrassed or would say, oh man, you know, I just you know A B and C has happened. Yeah, yeah. And not not giving myself the grace to say, oh, would say what you've been through is 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 a platform for you to be where where God's purpose is for you. And it's a platform for you to also be a voice of reason to those who are behind you mm-hmm. and those who are experiencing sure. the exact same thing that you are experiencing. Um, a lot of the times we, as you said, the platforms that are given are people that have already accomplished all of these mm-hmm. things. And mm-hmm. there's so much pressure um, in society to be the successful person. Sure. And there's never a person who's going to say, say and tell you that it's it's okay to be in this position right now. To still now, be on the way. To be on the way. It's, yeah. it's okay to be yeah. the groove girl just discovering herself. Yeah. It's okay to be the mother who, who doesn't know um, where her next meal will come from or what, or what her purpose is. It's okay. Mm. You, will, you will get through it and you'll figure it out. Last but not least, yeah. what's that one thing you know for sure? About? <laughs> What's the one thing that you absolutely believe in and you're like, yeah. this thing I know for sure in life and I stand by it? That God will work it out. Okay. He will work it out. Panic aside, your own experiences aside, your own worries aside. And I think, you know, we, we take that verse for granted. Lena, it's it, do not worry. And when God says do not worry, he means it from the depth of his heart. Hmm. Worrying doesn't change anything. At the end of the day, if you are in his umbrella and his arms embraced in him, he will work it out. Whether you are worried or not, a plan will happen. So that's also what I'm also uh, learning and rediscovering. We'll say, I just need to let it go. Knowing that he will work it out. <laughs> Thank you, Zama. <laughs> and for you, do not be afraid. He will work it out. Amen. I'll see you in the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.